My Sterling Single Part 47, testing the axle driven water pump, fitting the ash band underneath the firebox, finding out which are the correct water connections on the engine and making a modification to the pipe layout. If you've seen my series about the Simplex Prairie Tank, you will realise just how much work needs to be put into miniature locomotives. And this one is the same, there's a lot to do even though it looks very complete. What I tend to do is hop around from different projects just to keep things interesting. The Simplex Rebuild project ran to 105 episodes. To be fair though, the Simplex did need a lot more attention than this engine did. I've only recently returned to this project to pipe up the tender to the engine, and believe it or not, I forgot which connection was which. I mean, on the engine, not the tender. Originally this engine wasn't fitted with injectors, so I had to modify the plumbing. In the last couple of episodes you've been watching me piping the tender to allow connections between the tender and the engine. In this clip I'm using a light on the end of a really clever magnetic pickup device just to confirm which connection is which. And you may have guessed I got it wrong. It was a long time since I piped up these connections on the engine, but my logic told me that obviously the two outer ones must be the water inlet for the injector, the centre one with the pressure union on it is obviously the hand pump, and the remaining two connections are for the water feed to the axle driven pump and the water bypass return. Here's a better view from underneath and you can clearly see that that is not the case. From top to bottom, the first two are the injector water feeds. The next one down is obviously the fitting that connects the hand pump to the boiler's check valve, because that has a threaded pressure fitting on it. The next one down is the return from the water bypass valve to the tender, and the one at the bottom is the water inlet to the axle driven pump. Some of the connections are obvious, you can see them clearly. The bottom one feeds the water pump. There is also another problem. The pipes are in the way of the ash pan. It's impossible to fit the ash pan unless I move the position of some of the water pipes, particularly the one that feeds the water pump at the bottom. Fitting the ash pan complete with the grate when the engine is on its side is difficult, and I still need to move one of the injector water feed pipes away from the ash pan because if the pipe is touching the ash pan, the pipe will get hot, the water inside it will get hot, and the injector won't work. I'm going to move the injector water inlet pipe to the other side of the spring, between the spring and the wheel, and that should be okay. While the engine was on its side, I thought it was a good opportunity to give it a thorough coating of oil, and I was surprised to see that it was fairly oily to start with. As I've just mentioned, with the engine in this position, it was very difficult to fit the ash pan when the grate was inside it. So temporarily I removed the grate. It will be easier to do this when the engine sat on its wheels. Although, to be perfectly honest, the ash pan is quite a tight fit between the two axle box horns. I think I'm going to modify it slightly. It's really important with a miniature steam locomotive to be able to immediately drop the fire if you get a water feed problem so the last thing you want is an ash pan that is a tight fit on the boiler. What I'm about to do is verify where the piping is exactly. I'm going to connect two pieces of silicone rubber piping to the inlet to the axle pump and the bypass from the axle pump. The next thing to do using a pan is to fill the container with water. As my new second part of the workshop is right next to the kitchen, this is very convenient. With the black silicone rubber pipes in position, it's time to connect some compressed air. I'm connecting the compressed air through the pressure feed, which normally goes to a check valve on the back head of the boiler. When I open the compressed air valve, the engine starts to run quite slowly, and as you can see, it's pumping water beautifully. The pipe that the water came out of was the pipe that returns the water from the bypass valve to the tender. What I'm doing here is closing the bypass valve and with a click the boiler check valve or clack valve opens suddenly, that's why it's making a noise. Unfortunately though, now when I open the bypass valve again, air is coming out of the pipe as well as water, which means that the check valve isn't seating. 
The water in this part of the world, near York, is hard water. It contains a lot of limescale. And when I last steamed this engine, which was a long while back, I left some water in the boiler. I only drained it over winter. And I even noticed some limescale in the water gauge. It will need cleaning out, I think. Now I need to make two more pieces of piping. Because I made a mistake. We all make mistakes, as I said to myself when I divorced my second wife. So now I have to make two more pipe connectors. This is not difficult. The first thing to do is to dismantle the existing pipes and take the adapters off the ends of them. A very simple job with this superb Proxon blowtorch. I'd just like to clarify that I am not sponsored by Proxon and every Proxon tool that you see in my workshop I paid full retail price for. With a bit of pipe bending, this time bending the pipes to the right length, I end up with a kit of parts. So I took the piping into the outer part of the workshop and silver soldered a couple of coned unions on the ends of them. In the video it looks like I have the silver solder wire in the flame all the time, but I don't. It's close by. All I'm doing is touching the silver solder wire on the work when it's at the right temperature. And in no time at all, this is what I get. I cleaned the pipe work using a piece of Scotch-Brite, then I applied a small amount of Fryolux soft solder paint, and once again using my small Proxon blowtorch, I heated the parts to melt the solder, and as the belt and braces approach, I also applied a little bit more at the end of each union. One viewer made a comment that I didn't quite understand. He said, I suppose it's all right using soft solder for parts that don't get hot. I didn't understand this really because soft solder is okay up to boiling point at 100 degrees C. It's only a problem when the boiling point goes up if the water's under pressure. The little Mammod steam engines seem to be quite happy and they're soft soldered together. But soft solder is no good if the pressure is around 80 pounds per square inch because the temperature becomes too high. After the silver soldering and soldering process, the pipes were a little bit oxidised, so I used some Brasso wadding to clean them. Here are the pipes once I've cleaned them up using the Brasso, and as you can see, both of the pipes are a different length. I'm just measuring to make sure they're OK, and yes, they should fit perfectly. When the pipes are tightened down onto the valves, they are approximately one inch apart. But at the other end, the need to be less than one inch apart. I decided to fit a piece of blue silicone rubber tubing, which is a larger gauge, on the main feed pipe and the five millimeter internal diameter pipes on the rest of the fittings. Now I can fit all the pipes to the engine, including the pressure feed, and then push the tender up to the engine and the pipes don't kink. And that's it for this episode. The tender piping is now completed. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.